Burger King will fucking come to us. All we do is hit a couple buttons on our hand computer and plastic will show right up to your door for you to eat it. Guys, it's the same brain. And somehow we've managed to engineer every single dragon out of the story where we end up getting the princess, okay? We don't have to slay any dragons, cross any bridges over moats. We don't do any of that shit. We just princess. The funny thing is that the princess in this circumstance is eating cardboard and watching pixels. Welcome back guys, welcome back to the Must Become channel where we believe that what you can become, you must become. That basically means that if you have potential to do something, I believe it's your obligation to actualize that potential into real results, not just leave it sitting on the couch playing video games or watching porn. I believe that you must take what you can become and you must become it. So this channel is dedicated to helping those people who wanna leave a dent in the universe and actualize that potential. With that said guys, welcome back to this channel. Today we are going to be talking about how you, you are, are, being are being sedated, okay? You are being sedated. There's lots of different things that are happening right now in the world. There's a lot of different services that you guys have access to and it might seem like they're all convenience, but you might not realize just kind of like in my video in the past when I was talking about having your attention stolen by watching, you know, an attractive girl when you don't really choose to, your brain is just taken. It's a similar thing where you think you're being offered something by these services or these products or these substances. You think you're being offered something when really things are being stolen from you. That's what's important for you to understand. You need to understand that you guys are being sedated and that you're not achieving your full potential. You're not becoming what you must become because of these sedation tactics and these sedation methods. So today I'm going to explore a little bit about what exactly those are. But before I do, as always, please, if you like my videos, leave me a like. It really helps me out in the algorithms. Also leave a comment down below if you have any questions whatsoever, because I answer every single comment that comes through that comment section into that comment box. The next thing that I wanted to mention is please hit that notification bell, because that way you can derive the most value from this platform, from my channel, from other channels like it, that will help you become everything that you must become. So with that said, with the initial plugs kind of out of the way, let's jump into this video. Guys, I want to start by discussing a little bit how you're being sedated so that you can kind of see some of this evidence for yourself. And once you begin to kind of just see it for yourself, you're going to begin to realize that these methods really are taking away a lot of your potential and the potential that you want to use in order to leave a dent in the universe. Okay. So I think first and foremost, probably the most obvious one, at least one of the most obvious ones, the first thing is with women. Guys, men are having a terrible time, even just speaking to women. I'm not even talking about womanizing or whatever, if that's your thing, even if you just want a wife or a girlfriend or, or to settle down with kids and all that kind of stuff, whatever it is, guys, men are having a horrible time with women. And why is that? Let's talk about why that is. Guys, males nowadays are getting used to these comforts. They're getting used to not having to pursue anything. Back in the day, we would have had to hunt something if we wanted to eat it. If we wanted to sleep somewhere else, we would have had to build it, these sorts of things. And now we just live in a world where we have these services that just come straight to us. And I'll get a little bit more into this in a second, but you'll see these services just kind of come to us. And what's happening as a result is that we become sedated. All these things are kind of turning off all the little parts in our brain that get us to be go-getters and get us to have a fire in our ass to actually achieve certain things. So we have to understand that in order to get back to a place where we're killers and we have that motivation, we have the ambition, we need to get rid of these sedation methods. So as I was saying with women, I guess there is really kind of two parts to this. The first part is that men are obviously having a harder time with women, right? It's estimated that something like 85% to 90% of men under 30 haven't lost their virginities yet, right? This is leading to this epidemic called incels, right? So that's uh, involuntary celibates, okay? So that's people who essentially want to lose their virginity, right? They're 30, they're still living in their mom's basement, but they have no opportunity because they are too nervous to meet women or whenever they do meet women, they mess it up because they have nothing in them. They have no substance to offer that woman. And women are bullshit detectors. They know if you're gonna try and fake it and you're gonna try and act like a hustler or act like a G and you're not, yo, they'll be able to tell it. They'll be able to tell. And the reason why is because that's a lot of evolutionary hardware that's gone into a woman's brain that allows them to see right through all this fucking bullshit. Now, the second part, which is really interesting, is that men themselves, this is an epidemic in and of itself, men themselves are decreasing in quality of their character. Now, let me explain a little bit and go into a bit more depth as to why this is. Guys, since the 1960s, 1970s, when hormonal birth control kind of came out, women had to be less selective with men. And the reason why they had to be less selective with men, specifically their sexual partners, the reason why is because the investment now in having sex, the risk of having sex with someone wasn't that high because they no longer had to carry a baby to term where they'd be vulnerable for nine months. But on top of that, that meant that they didn't have to worry specifically about getting into bed with someone who wasn't going to be there to protect and provide for that offspring or themselves in that vulnerable state for the nine months and soon thereafter. And so as hormonal birth control became more and more prevalent within society, what would begin to happen was that it began to gradually alter the fabric of our culture. As men no longer really had to be upstanding characters, they didn't really need to demonstrate to the woman or to the woman's family that they were someone worth kind of inviting into her life or even her body at the very least, men began to lose those character traits that were actually really, really valuable. So now a woman might be able to go and sleep with some guy who was able to put on a good act for a night, but he wasn't a good dude and he had no idea how to actually contribute at all. And so the standard of men began to gradually go down. It would have started up here, 
and it will end down here. And the reason why is because they no longer need to bridge this gap between, okay, there's this huge risk that if, if I don't get someone who's at the top with an upstanding character, it doesn't really matter that much because I won't even get pregnant. So I may as well sleep with whoever I want to just kind of in that moment. I don't really need to think beyond that moment. I can just have a really short time horizon and think, listen, if it's fun for a couple hours, if it's fun this night, I've had a few drinks, if it's fun for me, that's all that matters. The guy that I'm getting into bed with doesn't need to be that great of a dude. He just needs to be able to make me have a good time for the night. And even that's not necessarily a guarantee, but I'll give it a shot because I'm on birth control and I don't really run any huge risks. So as a result of this kind of permeating through our culture, what we're beginning to see is that men that don't necessarily have really desirable character traits like ambition and these things that come from a high testosterone filled man, a traditionally masculine man that'll go out and bring home the bacon. What happened is that over time, men no longer needed to garner those actual qualities and those traits and those skills because they knew that it's more likely that they'll be able to have sex just by faking it or not needing those skills at all. So the issue is that men have began to have ingrained in their mind through the culture that started, I guess, in 1960, 1970 with hormonal birth control. They have began to have ingrained in their mind that they no longer need to actually have these skills. They no longer need to display these traits. They simply need to be able to fake it or maybe not even that. Girls will just accept it because they've had a few couple drinks and they'll take you into their bed just because of that. So I know I've gone around a couple times, but basically as a result, what's happened is men have no longer needed to have the kinds of traits that will actually be able to provide for somebody or protect somebody. And as a result, they've let their potential, which could have turned into something great, just kind of fade because sex is the greatest motivator on the planet. Now, the second thing that's coming from the sedation, men are having less muscle. We're seeing that since the 1950s, we're estimated to have something like 40% of what guys had in those years. Today, I'm talking about. So in 2022, which is when this video is being recorded, it's estimated that we have about 40% less testosterone in our bodies than men who actually lived in the 1950s, 1960s. Now, there's a few reasons for why this is happening. One is going back to that whole birth control situation, okay? Just as a quick aside, I'll explain something about how the female hormonal birth control gets into the water system and impacts males' hormones. So in city, basically, in city water plants, yes, it, they filter out um, things like debris and really disgusting things in the water, big, big pieces, big molecules, big, big things like that. They're unable to, at least in most cities, no cities that I've heard of, they're unable to filter out tiny little particles, like for example, estrogen and progesterone, these synthetic hormones that women are taking to control their ovulation rhythm. Girls will consume these pills regularly, obviously to prevent their pregnancy. They will then urinate into the sewage system it will go through the city and then eventually it will return its way back into the tap water that most people drink. I'll make a video on why you should never drink tap water, at least in most urban cities. But as a result, men are actually consuming estrogen. Not just that, but they're also consuming more soy foods, more flax foods, more chia foods, things that have these ingredients that are very high in estrogen. They're called estrogenics. Also another video that I will make, and a video about estrogenics specifically to let you guys know what foods to avoid. But what's happening is men are drinking these things and it's going into their body and they're putting exogenous estrogen into their body, either in forms of foods, like I just mentioned, or in form of actual synthetic hormones that haven't been filtered out through the city's water. And as a result, again, men are being sedated even further. Men are being brought down because they're not having their natural hormone balance in check. So a mixture of diet and exogenous hormones. Now that we've spoken a little bit with respect to muscles um, and kind of how taking exogenous hormones obviously is gonna lower your testosterone, lower your ambition and make you more sedated. And also how eating things like soy, chia, flax, these sorts of things that we're convinced by these ads, these plant-based ads nowadays that is valuable to a male's body, which are absolutely not. Let's go a little bit into how females are actually beginning to select for men that are less testosterone ridden. They have less testosterone moving through their veins. Let's let's kind of establish a little bit how this is actually beginning to happen. Again, as you probably would have guessed, it goes back to the birth control situation, guys. Back to the exogenous progesterone, estrogen that women are taking in. There was a study done. If you're interested, I'll put it down in the description. The study examined women when they were during their ovulation periods, and it would, it would take t-shirts, essentially sweaty t-shirts of different guys. It would take ones that had more muscle and less muscle, or higher testosterone and less testosterone. And essentially they would get women to smell these t-shirts, and from a pheromonal perspective, they were trying to see what t-shirt the woman preferred during what time of her ovulation cycle. This essentially would indicate do women always prefer men with higher testosterone or do they prefer men with lower testosterone at different times of their cycle? Essentially what the study would go on to find was that when women were ovulating, they were very, very much wanting a partner. They were at the point where their body's telling them that now's the time to become impregnated. They preferred t-shirts that had sweat on them that had the higher testosterone males pheromones. So essentially men that had more muscle, they were more attracted during the ovulation period. However, what they would also find was that when they were not on their ovulation period, they would find that they actually preferred the t-shirts of those who had less muscles, less testosterone, less of those traditionally kind of alpha qualities. Now you may ask yourself why this was, but the reason why is because when a woman is trying to become impregnated, she wants a certain kind of genes that are put in to her body, okay? So she wants to be impregnated with certain kind of genetic information that's gonna lead to a strong, protective, blah, 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 male, right? However, when she's not on that cycle, she's looking more for the provisioning side. She's looking more for the kind of like, Rolo Tomasi would call it kind of like beta bucks kind of thing. He says alpha fucks, beta bucks. The idea here is that a woman prefers to be impregnated by a certain kind of alpha 
and she prefers the protection and provisioning by a loyal beta. Now, again, these terms, alpha and beta, they're just placeholders. Don't get too held up on them because I know they're floating around everywhere in the manosphere and on YouTube and all this kind of stuff. Don't get too hung up on those terms if they bother you, but these are just ideas that'll help you understand the general concept. Now, we take that study and we look at the fact that, again, women are taking exogenous hormonal birth control. The thing about the hormonal birth control is what it does is it convinces the woman's body that she's pregnant all the time. And when a woman's pregnant and she's not in the height of her ovulation cycle, the height of her arousal, sexual arousal, this t-shirt study would tell us that she's gonna constantly prefer men that have lower testosterone. And of course, again, it's an epidemic that women are on these birth control pills. As a quick aside, I will just say, if there are any women watching this, please, before you decide to continue taking hormonal birth control, take that little piece of paper out of the packet and read it for what it says the actual side effects are. The laundry list goes bigger than I can fit into this shot. So just as a quick recap, here's kind of what's happening. Women are taking a substance that's convincing them that they're pregnant all the time, convincing their body on a hormonal genetic level that they're pregnant all the time. Now what the t-shirt, the sweaty t-shirt study teaches us is that when women are not at the height of their ovulation, they prefer a guy who has lower testosterone. And of course, lower testosterone generally means less ambition, less aggression towards the world. And guys, aggression isn't always a bad thing. If you're trying to tackle a big project or make your business really blow up, you're gonna need some aggression. So we see that more and more and more, girls are beginning to select guys with lower and lower testosterone. This, of course, is going to breed our genetic pool to have lower and lower testosterone as time goes on. So if you're a father, or maybe you've had a child for some years now, you might wanna be a little bit worried about that. You might wanna be concerned about that. And you might wanna do things to try and mitigate the sedation on their testosterone that a lot of our culture and environment and food and water is doing. Okay, so now we've covered less women, we've covered less muscles, let's go on to less ambition, arguably the most terrifying one of the three. I'll admit there isn't too much new information after I've said the points on those last two about women and muscles, but essentially what this is ultimately doing in kind of conclusion to men, what this is ultimately doing is lowering their ambition significantly. And when we lower their ambition, how are you supposed to become what you must become? Again, you might have that potential within you, but you have all these things that are beginning to sedate you. Things that are actually sedating you, I'm gonna go into that in a second. I'm gonna distill the three, four things that I think seriously are holding you guys back. If you can avoid these things, this is your best shot to actually become what you must become because remember that's the goal of this channel. Guys, we're totally less ambitious. As a group, men are less ambitious. Look what's happening even to the United States. There's so many people that used to believe in the American dream. And what was the American dream? You go out, you hustle, and you make it for yourself. But now there's so many people that want that handout. There's all these different programs and all these, like I just said, all these different handouts, all these things, they're gonna also keep you sedated. Now, the issue is most times, most times that you think you're being given something, something's being taken away from you, especially in today's culture. Again, like I mentioned in my other video and I referenced at the beginning of this video, you look at an attractive woman and you think, oh wow, I'm getting something. I'm getting to see her, you know, fucking walking around in a sports bra or whatever. And, you, and, you, and you're, you're drawn to it. You're magnetized by it. You're hypnotized by it. But the thing is, what that's stealing from you is your energy. You're stealing your attention. You invest so much attention. You can't fall asleep looking at porn. It doesn't happen. It just simply doesn't happen. And the reason why is because it's stimulating so many parts of your brain that's stealing so much energy that by the time you're finished watching that porn, you have no energy to do anything else. And that's actually a perfect segue into me talking about that first thing that's sedating you guys that you guys need to keep out of your lives, okay? First thing is porn, absolutely porn, but not just porn, specifically high-speed internet porn. Gentlemen, I'm not gonna make this an entire video just about porn, because that video is absolutely on its way, but I'm sure you guys have seen, if you guys are interested in my channel, you know, I know you've probably seen other huge channels out there that are trying to do a similar thing, and I hope all of them are telling you not to watch porn because that's one of the biggest things that you can avoid if you actually want to stop being sedated, wake up and actualize your potential. Just quickly, the benefits of watching porn are you feel good for a little bit. Okay, great. Downsides to watching porn is that you're completely rewiring your dopaminergic neurological system. Essentially what that is, is the system that gives you motivation and reward to get things done. You're completely fucking with it. And you need to not fuck with it because if you actually wanna actualize your potential, that thing is your friend and you can't fuck it up. So with respect to porn and high-speed internet porn, here's how this works, okay? Our ancestors, tens of thousands of years ago, would have seen a few viable mates in their entire life that they would have been attracted to and wanted to mate with, a few, okay? Compare that to now, when we watch porn, we might see, we might load up the Pornhub browser, load up the RedTube browser, whatever the fuck it is that you guys use. You might load up one of these browsers and you'll see maybe a thousand women. You'll see maybe a thousand women in about 15 minutes. That's gonna completely overload your circuits and it's gonna make your brain, your brain's plastic, right? It's gonna make your brain want to orient itself towards continuing to achieve that goal. Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, sex is the biggest motivator on the planet. And so when you watch porn and you just backdoor everything that our ancestor would have had to do, he would have had to display to our mate that, you know, that they're a worthy option 
option. All these things that, again, like I mentioned before, birth control is just throwing out the window. We would have had to display certain qualities that would have forced us to garner those qualities within ourselves. Maybe that's build muscles so that we could better protect our mate and our family. Maybe that's know how to hunt some sort of big ruminant from back in the day where we would have brought home, literally brought home the bacon to our family to eat. These sorts of things, we would have had to display these traits that would have attracted a female partner. But now with high-speed internet porn, we can just backdoor that whole process. And what's happening is it's short-circuiting our brains. We have no more motivation to do anything after that. And one thing you guys need to remember is, guys, it's the same brain. The brain that you're backdooring to go watch porn and you're going to go jerk off for however long it is to these like hot girls that your brain's going to then think, oh, well, I just impregnated a thousand women. I can relax. You know, once you're, once you, once you come, just, you can just, whatever, you can relax. There's no need. You just did your job. Yeah. It's the same brain that you're then going to go and ask to try and start a business or meet an actual real girl when the way you did it on porn was avoiding all the difficulties of actually going out and putting yourself out there and potentially being rejected by a partner. Yeah. Not gonna happen guys. So high speed internet porn is absolutely the first method of sedation. You need to get rid of that so that you guys can wake up and actually begin to actualize your potential. The second one guys, the second one kind of plays off the idea from the first one and this is fast food, but not just fast food, delivery fast food, okay? Again, look at these from an ancestral perspective, right? We'll see that back in the day, if we wanted to actually have a woman or whatever it was, by the way guys, the reason I use woman as a benchmark is because that would have been kind of one of the main goals, having a mate for our ancestors. Now today, you know, we can move it into having a business, leaving a dent in the universe and all these sorts of things, but it's roughly speaking the same trait. It's ambition and bravery and strength and courage and all these sorts of kind of traits that you know will actually help you develop into a person that can actually navigate throughout the world and not crumble at every little problem that pops up. The issue here is fast food that's delivered straight to wherever the fuck you are. Huge problem. Fast food plays on the same thing that I was talking about with porn. So we have, again, a neurological system that's designed to reward certain actions. It's going to reward our survival and it's going to reward us perpetuating the survival of our species into the future. Now, for some reason, I started a moment ago with porn, which is really pushing our species into the future. It's, it's, it's hijacking that system that wants us to reproduce and continue the human race. But now I'm going to jump into our own survival, okay? Again, back in the ancestral days, if we would have found the same kind of calories that we today find in a Big Mac, a Whopper, or a Baconator, whatever the fuck they're called, you know, we would have been set. We would eat that, we would feel amazing, and that's kind of why you, to this day, when you eat a high-calorie food, you feel really, really good. That's why all high-calorie foods are considered comfort foods today, is because you do feel comfortable, because your body would have rewarded you. If you went back in the day and you found a nice fatty ribeye steak, you know, you were able to take down a mammoth. Huge thing, you were able to eat a rib steak from a mammoth. Okay, that thing would have settled you. You would have been good for a long fucking time. A long fucking time because that signified the calories that's actually in the food to keep you surviving and to keep you flourishing but today we have this kind of food that we eat this burger that has fucking 10,000 calories in it or whatever it is we have this huge fucking burger and we feel amazing but we just put essentially the nutritional equivalent to cardboard into our body sometimes even worse sometimes cardboard would actually be better and so it's the same thing as porn where we're short-circuiting this system, and then we get this feeling, this feeling that's been embedded into our ancestral upbringing, which is to feel good afterwards, to feel rewarded afterwards, which is essentially, like I said, our dopaminergic system being activated, but we're tricking it, we're tricking it. And then we want that same brain to go and actually act as if that system were intact and not being short-circuited day in and day out. Now, to add to that point, as if the diet weren't bad enough, also being sedated by the fact that now we don't even need to walk to Burger King to get the garbage. Burger King will fucking come to us. All we do is hit a couple buttons on our hand computer and, and plastic will show right up to your door for you to eat it. Guys, it's the same brain. And somehow we've managed to engineer every single dragon out of the story where we end up getting the princess, okay? We don't have to slay any dragons, cross any bridges over moats. We don't do any of that shit. We just <laughs> princess. The funny thing is that the princess in this circumstance is eating cardboard and watching pixels. Guys, the final third thing that is keeping you guys sedated. And I know there's gonna be a lot of different opinions on this. I know there's gonna be a lot of pushback on this one because I think porn and fast food are pretty well understood to be negatives. I think this is one of the only ones that people continue to really push that there's some really significant positives. And I don't give a fuck. If you're trying to change the world, if you're trying to leave a dent in the universe, this last one, I believe there is no place for it. And we can debate this in the comments, guys. If you have any comments about this last one, please let me know what your thoughts are. But I'm telling you right now, this is gonna be my opinion. The third one, guys, is marijuana. This one is particularly insidious because we've somehow managed to convince ourselves that doing this drug day in and day out is a relaxant. And like, that's a problem with having too short of a time horizon. If you want to say 30 minutes, sure, sure. You might feel relaxed. I mean, personally, whenever I've done it, I generally feel anxious, but you might feel relaxed. But if you zoom out and you look at a month, you'll see that not only that day did you not really fucking get much done, but the day after and the day after and the day after you're coming out of that weed hangover 
And the problem is that during those days, you were way less efficient. And if you want to get things done, there's no way you're going to fucking feel relaxed when you zoom out to 30 days and see that you just wasted a whole bunch of time in your life. That's not relaxing to realize you just lost potential. The other issue with weed, again, that makes it such a fucking bitch is that it doesn't seem like it has that big of an effect. You know, you drink alcohol and, you know, it's pretty intuitive that on some level you're poisoning your body. On some level, you know, you see people out in the street fucking vomiting and you wake up the next day and you feel like you were hit by a bus. On some intuitive level, you kind of realize you're poisoning your body. The issue with marijuana is that there doesn't seem to be that significant of a drawback, especially in that moment or the moments following it that you can really put your finger on. Like I said, if you kind of zoom out, to 30,000 feet or out to 30 days or out to two months or whatever it is, like is, you'll begin to see that there are issues with weed, right? If you're self-aware enough to do it and you haven't just smoked yourself retarded every day since that first day to that 60th day. But the thing with weed is that what you don't realize is that it slowly steals your life. It slowly sedates you. It doesn't quickly drop you. Like, you know, you have a Big Mac, you eat that and then after you're just sitting on the couch and you're just dead, right? Or same thing with porn. You jerk off, you bust a nut and then you just don't do anything because you're like, oh my God, I'm just gonna lay in bed for a while watch a few YouTube videos or whatever. And weed's not like that. You know, you do feel more relaxed and you feel more tempted to do weed, but you can convince yourself for a time. The issue with weed is that because it slowly, 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 because it slowly permeates through your life, the issue is that you could smoke weed day one and still go to work the next day. But by day 80, probably won't wanna to go to work. Or at least the quality of work that you do is gonna be significantly diminished. And so this can lead you to think that, you know, weed isn't the problem. It must be something else because if it was weed that was the problem, on day five, I wouldn't have gone to work or I wouldn't have wanted to go to work. But that's the issue is it slowly steals your energy in your time and sedates you by becoming part of your lifestyle but because it sneaks under the radar you're so tempted and you're so you're so tempted to think that it can't be weed because i introduced weed way back when and i've been smoking weed since i was in high school and you know it can't be weed that's the problem but that's the issue with this whole sedation right with all these methods coming through all these methods attacking you from all these different fronts introducing weed into the system just lowers your ability to fight them off and it's one of those things that it's not immediately obvious it's not until you stop smoking weed for a year or two years that you see wow i was a fucking loser when i was doing that so guys I'm gonna to begin to wrap this video up. This video was essentially about how you're being sedated in the modern world and that you cannot afford to be in that position if you're trying to change the world, you're trying to leave a dent in the universe and you're trying to become what you must become. Just to wrap it up, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick summary of what we just talked about, okay? We're talking about how guys are getting less women. They have less opportunity to actually meet a partner, whether that's for one or two nights and that's all they wanna do. They wanna have a little bit of a fling or if they actually wanna settle down with a wife who's actually gonna bring them kids and a home and a family. We talked about how guys are getting less muscle and that's a result of not only women selecting guys that have less testosterone as a result of them being on birth control, but also because they are actually consuming that exogenous progesterone and estrogen that's leading to them having less traits that are generally exhibited by those with higher testosterone. In that, we talked about the t-shirt study and how that interplays with birth control and leads women to actually select guys who by their very nature just have lower testosterone, which is overall just harming our society. And as a result, leading to more sedated men that are within our culture. We also mentioned quickly how women are having to be less selective as a result of them not having the same level of investment every single time they get into bed with a man. That led us ultimately to conclude that men are just gonna have less ambition. The reason why they're gonna have less ambition is because they have to do less in order to actually achieve being with a partner. And as a result, they don't need to cultivate the traits, the attributes, and the skills that would actually lead them to being a productive person. Maybe you don't need to necessarily be a productive person like we did back in the day where we had to gather logs and hunt boar, but you know what? Those are the same traits that will lead you to leave a dent in the universe through your business, your family, your relationships, whatever it is. After going through those three ways that we are being sedated, I kind of began to talk about the three kind of main methods that I see that we're being sedated day in and day out. I spoke about first, high-speed internet porn and how high-speed internet porn fucks your dopaminergic system right off the bat and gives you less chance of actually being able to use it as a tool. Second, I talked about how our diets are full of plastic, cardboard garbage. Essentially, when you go and eat a Whopper or a Baconator or whatever the fuck there are now, whenever you go and eat that shit, how that's doing the same thing that porn's doing to your system with respect to reproduction, it's doing that same thing with respect to diet and how you feel like you're surviving, but really, you're just killing yourself slowly. Sedation. Lastly, I spoke about one of the most insidious ones because it creeps under the radar, which is marijuana, how you can smoke it every single day and you think that, you know what, just because on day two or three of smoking marijuana, I still felt okay, that you don't realize that, no, it takes a little while for marijuana to take an impact on your life. And that's not saying go and smoke it once in a while, let's go roll the dice, no. That's saying I recommend smoking it basically never. The reason why is because if you actually wanna actualize your potential, why run the risk? And guys, while these aren't just the three methods that we're being sedated and we're being stolen away from our dreams, stolen away from leaving a dent in the universe, while these aren't the only three, there's other things like, for example, we can just stream any movie we want anytime we want. We can go on a dating app and see as many girls, a similar thing to porn, and just start talking to people and feel validated, even though we did nothing for that validation. And three, everyone seems to be riding fucking electric scooters nowadays instead of actually pedaling themselves on a bicycle or walking where the fuck they're going. These are just some of the methods that you guys are being absolutely sedated and having your lives stolen from you. Guys, it's time to actually fight back by taking your life into your own hands. Make some commitments, make some 
30 day, 60 day, 90 day commitments, whatever the fuck you need to do. Use some of my videos where I give you guys tips and tricks on how to build habits and sort of break these chains of things that are holding back your dopaminergic system from being an actual tool and asset to helping you create something great with this life. Guys, it's time to become what you must become. That's why you're here. And this isn't just another video that you watch and fuck off. This is a video where you actually watch and you act on these things. So I want you guys to make a plan right after this video of what you're gonna do to at least cut one of those fucking things out of your life and you're gonna see yourself improve as a man. A video is absolutely coming where I don't just talk about how we're being sedated, but a way where we can actually begin to empower ourselves beyond baseline. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. On that note, as always guys, please like my video. It always helps me out in the algorithms. Please leave a comment down below. I love speaking with you guys about any sort of topic you guys wanna talk about. I take video suggestions. I love just discussing and shooting this shit. And if you wanna know anything in particular about anything that I said or are interested about any studies that I spoke about, please let me know in the comment section below. That'd be amazing. And then always ring the bell for notifications because that way you can derive as much value from my platform and from my channel as possible because my goal here is to help you guys. So with that said, my name's Spencer and this is the Must Become Nation. I believe that what you can become, you must become. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you in the next video.